Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my channel. Just trying to get started, can't make my mind up what I'm going to paint today and I've been fuffing around for the last three hours thinking I don't know what to do. Pathetic, isn't it? Um, this is one, of, oh, I don't know why I'm showing you this because it's colourful I suppose, this is just a swatched out set of paints. I think this was the Meaden colours. Um, anyway, that's irrelevant to today. Uh, what is perhaps relevant, I don't know, I'm going to try this. Today I'm going to try to paint some um, wild roses because on our challenge that we have running at the moment, our daily challenge today, which is Flowers of the World, today is the day for um, the flower of Alberta, Canada which is the wild rose and um, I've done this this little sketch here in my book Flowers of the World which is getting mucky as usual everything always does anyway I was quite reasonably pleased with the way that turned out and I have done a short of it but I'm kind of sort of wondering whether to just have another go and do something perhaps completely different um, to capture this particular flower um, by the way, if you're interested in participating in our daily challenges, which we do have going on all the time, there's been three so far this year, uh, Light Out of Darkness, um, Let There Be Love, and this month, Flowers of the World, and it will be carrying on. Sometimes they might be a little bit different uh, from the format we've had up until now, depending on what's going on in my world. Um, but you can, if you become a member of Patreon or of YouTube or of indeed Facebook, which you can now become a member of our um, channel on. Um, you'll have to look into that uh, because I can't tell you much about that because I don't actually understand it. Um, anyway, uh, if you are a member, then you can become a member of our Facebook private members group or Patreon. And on there, either of those two places, you will get opportunities to participate in the challenge, more so than if you're just an ordinary subscriber. So... Um, I'll put a link in the description below to tell you how to um, to join. And um, I'll stop talking now and start thinking about painting. Um, so I'm going to use, as usual, my Meaden paints, uh, my Meaden paper. And this is my uh, collaboration set of uh, honey-based, handmade, ecologically sound, VH Aquarelle paints made in Germany, available worldwide. You can order these wherever you live, especially in America. She'll send them to you, no problem whatsoever. Um, and they're lovely. She put together this set for me at my request with my particular choice of colours, which are these ones here. That's the set, which are particularly good for flowers. And the, and the paints are really nice. Some people have said that they smell really nice. I'm going to try that. I can't smell anything. Ever since I had COVID, I can't taste or smell anything. I eat my food now without really knowing what I'm eating. I have to rely on other people to tell me whether the dinner is okay. Isn't that awful? And I can't really smell anything either. I can't smell flowers at all. So there we are. That's life, I suppose. Maybe I'm just getting old. Um, anyway, so this is a practice piece which I did with mixing. Um, this red here with a little bit of this red here to make a kind of pink and then diluting it down um, with water so that it's not too dark. And then you get, I do like these little bits of paper that Meaden sent me, these little sample pieces, and really good. Um, a nice pink, you see. So it's no effort at all to paint a five petaled flower like that. And I'm using a Craftmo brush. This is my V, my uh, Craftmo Diane Anton set. Still got a few of those available. If you want to purchase, go to Craftmo 
uh, their website and you know just let the water do the work and next thing you know you've got a rose and then you can pick up a bit of green and do a stem and a leaf or whatever so you know let's do something like that let's do something like that that's what that was anyway that was a practice Okay, so looking at the flowers that I've just painted and looking at my iPad for a inspiration of what they look like, um, I think I'll sit down. I'm just concerned that you can't see these paints. That's the only problem with using a tin like this. Um, I'm going to put that palette there and you can just see a little bit if I mix on there. Hopefully that's okay. I'm not going to do a drawing first. I'm just going to go for it. Let's bring my water a bit closer. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm probably thinking I'm probably going to um, use a bit of line work at the end of this, maybe some um, pen work and these these roses have got five petals so we'll try to remember that and I'm leaving a gap in the middle for the yellow um, centers and I think we'll just drop a little bit more pink on the outside edges You know how, how I like to paint loose and uh, not to be too particular about anything, actually. It's one part of your life where you don't have to pay too much attention to anything. You can just make it up as you go along, unlike when it comes to paying your income tax and that sort of thing. Um, so we'll keep them nice and big, shall we? Yeah, make them nice and big. Doesn't matter if they kind of fall off the page. And I'm not painting the, the shapes accurately. Just uh, maybe I'll put one down here where I've deliberately gone off the page. Big one. I used to live in um, <clears throat> Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Uh, <laughs> I did. I used to live there. And I enrolled at one time in the uh, Wild Rose College. They, they had, I don't know if it's still there, um, a herbal medicine college where you could do correspondence courses. And at that time I was interested in, in doing that kind of thing. So I enrolled, didn't finish it unfortunately, I, and something else came up and I couldn't finish it. So anyway, so now we have some green, but I always remember the wild rose, it was down on near the sea train. I don't know if anybody else remembers that. Maybe it is still there. So I'm going to paint in some leaves at, at random. I've just mixed the two shades of green that I've got in my set here um, together. And we'll put some leaves in and I'm just hoping and praying that this is going to work out while it's drying. And then when it's a bit drier, I can put some centers into. And this is where I let go of realism, if you know what I mean. I'm going to add some yellow to that green now and let go of realism. It's real enough that I know that they've got, they're pink and they've got five, five um, petals. That's enough. And so, yeah, so we'll put another light green one there. So this has now become a pattern. 
Um, is that dry enough? Nearly. And let's see, what else have we got in the way of green? I'm going to take some of this blue at the end here and mix that with a bit of that yellow here. Come up with a um, muted green. And we'll put some little leaves in here and there. And then I'm going to find some dark blue, bit of red and some green to make a, a dark green. I want it more greener than that. Uh, I don't like that colour. Isn't didn't come out the right way, so let's go back to that green. Add a bit of brown, perhaps. Let's see what happens there. Okay. I just wanted a few sort of stem-like things, really. Okay, and let's put some nice dark. Leaf-like things in. I think I'm looking for the yellow now. I'm not personally very comfortable using little palette paint tins. It's not my favorite way of painting, but I'm doing that because these are nice paints and um, I want to support Victoria. She's trying to set her business up. So, so I'm, I'm giving them a fair trial. Okay, so that's the insides. And then we need some more pink, I think, on the petals. And we just have to kind of work on building this up as we go along. Build a rose, like build a bear. And remember not to worry. I'm telling myself because I'm terrible. I'm the same as everyone else. I start these things and then I get halfway through and I think, oh my God, what am I doing? And But I have to keep going. Otherwise, I, you know, I'm wasting my time. And I get to this point now and I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen here, but um, I, need to, I need to get some more yellow into the leaf areas. So I'm going to try and be brave and just, this is not the way I normally do it. I'm going to, to paint into and onto the flowers that I've just created with this yellowish color. And I have absolutely no idea if this is gonna work. And in a minute, I'm going to stop and dry it and see what we can do next. Yeah, that's time, time to dry and take a look. So I'll turn you off for a second. Okay, so, this is, this color here, this green is this one here, and I haven't added anything to it. And I'm going to try seeing what happens if I um, paint that in to the crucial parts, that is to say um, the, the joins between the petals and just keeping that really 
uh, random. Let's see what happens. I'm just bringing it out. And we'll see where this goes. It's quite exciting when you're trying something different, which I am. And we'll see, we'll see. So that now I'm gonna add some of the other green and join that on. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. That was a mistake. Take that off. Yeah, that was meant to go there. So we're, we're kind of um, building up layers. Every time you put more paint on, you're going to get more um, variations. And, you know, because the color underneath shines through. and alters what you put on top. And I'm not painting over the flowers themselves. I'm just trying to create quite a dark leafy background. So kind of abstract, let's say. This is one way of creating a more abstract effect. And I am making an effort to cover up all, almost all the whites. Okay, and now I think it probably needs a few more bits of very dark. So we'll do that mixed with red to give us a purple. Really dark green. Dropping that in where it's damp. I don't know how long I've been painting yet. I think sometimes it is quite a good idea to add red to the green because that purple sort of gives um, I don't know, brings out the red in the flowers or something. the pink. I'm trying to paint intuitively. I'm trying not to think too hard. Never works if I do. Sometimes that means when you think, oh, I'll do that, like that, for example, um, you should not. <laughs> you should ignore your first thought and do something else. Okay, I'm going to dry that now and see where we're at. 
Okay, so this is okay at the moment. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up my brand new, as yet unused, Meaden gouache set, gouache uh, paint set. This is tubes of gouache, which is opaque watercolor. For those of you who haven't yet met it, I remember very clearly the day I first came across gouache. It was in Canada, actually, in, in Canmore, as it happens, which is the next place we lived in after Calgary. And um, I used to go to a class there. Actually, I haven't talked about this before. Um, and I, I wonder sometimes whether she still does that class. Her name was, let me see, uh, I can, just a second. I have her book here. I have her book here. This is Donna Jo Massey. I know we have quite a few people here on the channel who um, live in Canada, live in Calgary, maybe have been to Canmore, perhaps have seen her paintings. This is one of her paintings. She does or did, I don't know um, if she still does, uh, but she, she wrote this little book to help her students. Oh, look, there's the wild rose. There we are, <laughs> the wild rose. So she didn't influence me at all, she said, ironically. Didn't influence me at all, Donna Jo. Did you? No, not at all. <laughs> That's really funny. I hadn't looked at this book for years. Um, I used to go to her class in Canmore every week after I had had um, a bout of breast cancer and I was trying to recover um, my health. And so I was only about 45 at the time and um, it was all a bit of a horrible time to be going through so I enrolled in her class and we did that I didn't think I didn't realize she had could have used that as reference couldn't I but it didn't really matter because I kind of did anyway um Donna Jo Massey yes lovely lady absolutely marvelous teacher loved her and learned a lot from her and um I can't even remember now why oh yes she was the one who introduced me to gouache I hadn't come across it before and um, I'm going to get some of this out because I want some opaque yellow um, and orange, really. So I'm going to squeeze, excuse me, Donna, Joe. Yeah, I painted really hard for her. I tried to please her. She used to make us copy famous paintings and we used to have to trace them by holding them up against the window and tracing them in the light like that, like I've shown you how to do. And um, I did them multiple times trying to get there, trying to learn from those famous American painters. And I was always a little bit surprised how many times I had to paint things like grain silos and the side of a red barn and that kind of stuff, which didn't really mean anything to me. But there we are. OK, so I've put out some orange that is... Um, that is yellow, uh, yellow mid-yellow, lemon yellow and white. And I'm going to find a smallish brush like this one. And I'm going to try and paint the stamens and the anthers of the centers of these flowers with this. And I'm going to hope that it will show up on the pink. So we'll do that. I might add a little bit of red to that in places to make it a bit darker in places. And we'll just have fun doing poppity pops. And we'll do some in a, a lighter color. A bit more water. Or white, perhaps. And then I'm going to try to, with the point of that, try to indicate some the stamens.
Okay, and then we'll do the others in the same kind of way. A little bit of red to make that a bit more orange. And And this one down here. And we'll put some on here too. Right, um, I was a bit distracted there because it smelt as if my, I've got an incense uh, thing burning here and it smelt as if it was catching fire. But, so I'm going to just even out, I'm going to take some of this white gouache, and mix it with some of the pink from my set and I'm going to tidy up the edges because by doing these really loose, you get a really nice background, but then the flowers can be, the flowers themselves can be a bit messy. So if we do this, you see, it's even better then because you've got even more interest. So the white gouache mixed with the pink from the other set, the, um, Victoria um, Hilbrecht set. So that's that's working, I think. There's Gabriel singing away. I don't know whether these um, Meden gouache paints are as opaque as they could be. We'll see when they dry. So I'm adding a bit of a bit more pink here over the white. That's the thing with, with gouache, it is interesting, it's a different process and um, if you feel like getting hold of some, get some of these Meden ones, they're not expensive and you can play around 
And sometimes you'll find that using gouache will enable you to rescue a painting that otherwise would have failed. Failed to please you, I should say. Not any failure um, judgment or anything like that, but just sometimes. Sometimes we don't like what we've done. Other people might though. You know, I've in fact sold more than one painting that I thought was, well, not one of my best. Not recently. I don't sell that many paintings at the moment. Kind of wet that up and make it a bit more sloppy. Okay. And then I think we probably need I think if we just now put in place a few more obviously leaf-like leaves, and that will probably bring us to a point where we think, that's okay. And the idea of this, once it had decided what it was going to do, was to be somewhat um, abstract, a sort of semi-abstract floral. And I have been recently doing something a bit like this with um, making a dark final gesture, bringing in almost black. It's not actually black, but... Which, um, to... To use a commonly used phrase, makes the colours pop a bit. Uh, I think we're probably going to have to stop soon. Not entirely simple, deciding where to put these shapes. And then I'm going, I think, to pick up a bit more warmth for the centers. This is a little drop of Viviva transparent red. Yeah. Okay, 
Okay, I'm going to dry that and then I might come in with a bit of white pen. We'll see what that looks like. Okay, so I've got my white Posca pen here and I'm going to put in some additional whites on the stamens and the anthers here. Partly because I just like doing that. And then I think these leaves need something to lift them a bit. That's a bit too much. And then we can finally ourselves an optical relief by going round the petals Well, that's interesting. You never really know what's going to happen. But it is often the case that a little bit of white added at the end of a painting makes it quite a bit of difference. This is something I have noticed. Sometimes quite a lot of white is needed. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go and have lunch because I'm hungry. And then I'll come back and I'm going to look at this and see what happens when it has actually properly dried. And at the moment, it looks quite interesting. And uh, I'm not entirely unhappy with it. We'll see what it's like when it's finished doing its magic while I have my lunch. Okay, so I'm back from lunch and um, I'm looking now at this painting and I've decided to use the features of the gouache and to mix up some semi-opaque um, greens and uh, just basically paint over the lines that I had done in white, which had given me some structure to the painting, but which I then felt were too harsh. So too much contrast, too much white. And so what I've done is I've mixed up some different shades of green and I've gone over those lines with these greens. And because it's opaque, um, it covers up all the um, bits that I don't like about what I've done. And you can really sculpt in a way, you can sculpt your painting to your own um, uh, pleasure by doing this. And don't worry about exactly matching the color that you're going next to or anything like that. You don't need to do that, but 
because this will just add more more fun to the painting um, if you just add these little tiny areas of uh, different greens here and there just making the whole thing into more of a kind of um, I don't know it's like a, a random patchwork of color in a way and it's quite fun and there's no harm in it you, there's nothing to lose and only something to be gained so you can shape your leaves and give them a bit more distinction by going behind them with a lighter color for example and you can add some yellows and things like that and just generally have a bit of fun and where you don't like the the white if the white is is glinting through you can just paint over that Sometimes you want it, sometimes you don't. So there we are. That was fun. If you enjoyed this, then give us a like and subscribe to the channel. Think about joining us on Patreon, taking part in the um, daily challenge that we have, which is entirely up to you to do whatever you want to do. But I do um, put my version of the challenge up on our Facebook, Diane Anton Private Members Group, page. I put my version up there to give you some ideas. I also, in the afternoons, generally speaking, it goes up in the afternoon. I put a short, if I've had time, I do try uh, to do a short of that painting that I've shared with you, which I do usually, I don't think I have done today. I might have done. I don't think I did. Too busy. Um, uh, what am I saying? Yeah, anyway. Um, if you join, you'll find out the answer to all of these and many other questions. The meaning of life, the universe and everything. Um, I'm just going to put a dark one in there because I feel as if that stops a bit suddenly. So just take that line down here a little bit. I can't quite make that dark enough. What do I want? I want a really dark blue. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, I'm going to let you go now. Have a go at that, see what you think. It's a com combination of watercolour and gouache, which is um, opaque watercolour. So I'll let you go and I'll see you again soon. And have fun with the uh, wild rose of Alberta, Calgary, Alberta, Canada, in fact. <laughs> see you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.